Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise on tonight. And we got to praise God just for you all being with us all tonight. And those that are watching via Zoom, via YouTube Live, we thank and praise God just for you all uh, joining us as well. Amen. And we are up to the word of God. Amen. Before, amen, we get here, amen, for our Bible study. At this time, we want to go to God in prayer. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. We're going to ask all that can to stand. I mean, every head bow, every eye closed. Father God, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you today, God. God, thank you just for another day that you've allowed us to see, oh God. We thank you for our life, our health, our strength, oh God. We thank you just for everything being as well off as it is in our life, oh God. We honor you and we exalt your name, oh God. We, we thank you just for being God. We thank you uh, just for the ways that you made. We thank you, God, just for your shield of protection around us, oh God. We we can't say anything, but thank you on tonight, God. Thank you for everything that you've done in our life. God, we pray that you have your way on tonight, God. Use us, lead us, guide us, speak to us on tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, have your way. Have your way in this place. Let your word have free course on tonight. Lord, we lift up every sick, every shut in, the bereaved family all around the world, God. We pray right now, God, that you touch and you intervene, oh God. God, give strength to where weakness is, oh God. Encourage that broken heart, oh God. Lift up that bow down head, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, give rest to that we spirit, that we remind, oh God. In the name of Jesus, restore joy, God. Restore peace, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, meet the needs of your people. And Lord, we just say thank you all today. We praise you and we give you glory. We pray you have your way in this service. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Somebody shout amen. 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 We thank you, praise God. Once again, just for you all being with us on tonight. Um, at this time, we're going right into the word on tonight. As you can see, amen, our Bible study on tonight will be by the topic or about the topic of true repentance. Somebody shout, true repentance. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what our main verse is going to be coming from Psalms, the 51st chapter, uh, familiar scripture, Psalms 51. Uh, but we want to deal with uh, true repentance and what that really does mean in our lives as people of God. Uh, so we want to deal with that and make sure that we're making the right decisions, making sure that we're walking worthy and pleasing in God's sight in the midst of what we go through. Hallelujah. Uh, so uh, let's talk about, let's start right there with true repentance. What does repentance mean? What does repentance mean? And what repentance means, as you can see here, is repentance is reviewing one's actions, examining your actions, and feelings that are contrite or, or, or remorseful feelings or regret for past wrong. In other words, the beginning portion of repentance, all that really means is recognizing, examining oneself to actually recognize and see and feel remorseful for or regret for your past actions. Uh, so for your past actions. Uh, and then I don't want to stop there because many times what we think of when we think of repentance is just that at all, feeling bad or feeling sorry about what you have done. But repentance does not stop there. I'll say that once more. Repentance does not stop with just feeling bad or feeling like you've done something wrong. But it goes on and tells us not only is it uh, reviewing one's action and feeling contrite or remorseful or regretful for your past wrong, but it's also accompanied by a commitment to or actual actions that show and prove a change for better. In other words, it's not just a thought, it's not just your words speaking, but there is action that follows behind repentance. It's not just saying that you're sorry. It's not just saying uh, that you feel bad. But what repentance really is, it means to change. Uh, uh, the real definition or the biblical definitions means to change your mind. To change your mind is what really repentance is. And, and I know many of us, and especially me, let me tell, speak for myself. When I grew up, all I thought that repentance was is you saying that you're sorry for an action or saying that you're sorry, being remorseful that you did something wrong and then just moving forward. 
But when we talk about true repentance, it brings forth a change. Now, what does really repentance mean? It means a change in your mind, changing your mind about certain things. And when we think about changing of our mind, the scripture says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture begins to tell us, that we've got to renew our mind. We, we've got to change our mind about what's going on in our lives, the sinful ways that we have, the, the wrong decisions and the wrong doings that we've done down through the past. It's time for us to change our mind. Sometimes we've got to lower the volume in the things that go on in our life. We've got to lower down the volume of the, uh, the crashing sounds or the issues that go on in our life. We've got to crash out and uh, clear out the clutter of the things that go on in our life. We've got to change our mind. And repentance does not just mean change your mind because one mind, your mind is an aspect of the change. Your mind is an aspect In his life, and how many of us have a desire to bring forth a change in our life? How many of us get to the place? And sometimes it takes for us to get to a place where we have done things that are not like ourselves. The Bible says this prodigal son uh, gets to a low, low place in his life, and and in the midst of him being in a low, low place, he comes to himself. and And many of us are in that place now. Many of us are in that decision or having that decision now, where we have to come to ourselves and we have to recognize that God has better for us. And that's where we ultimately have to come to that conclusion because the things that go on in our lives, the things that happen in our lives, we've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Can I get an amen on tonight? Amen. We've got to get to the place where we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We've got, uh, at some point, the decisions that we made that are not like God, we should come to the conclusion that I'm done with this life. And in order for us to get to that place where we're saying we're done with this life, we've got to make the decision to change. So not only do we change our mind, not only do we change our feeling, but we should change, that should change our purpose. Uh, our repentance should not only change our mind, not only should it change our feelings, but it should change our purpose. The Bible uh, begins to say in John, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse, when Jesus saw the man lying there at the pool of Bethesda, he knew that he had been there a long time and he said unto him, wilt thou be made whole? He, he asked this man a question as he was looking for healing. He says, will you be be made whole. He began to change, give him an option to change his purpose. And, and I come to tell somebody on tonight that if we allow ourselves to go through true repentance, if, if we allow ourselves to make some alterations and some changes in our life, that can change the purpose and the trajectory of our life. This man could have easily been sitting here for the rest of his life. Yeah. He could have easily been stuck in that condition for the rest of his life, but he got an opportunity to change. And many of us, we have that opportunity to change. We have that opportunity every single day of our lives that we wake up and we begin to breathe another breath of fresh air. We've got an opportunity to change. Lastly, not just changing our mind, not just changing a feeling, not just changing our purpose, but changing our conduct. Repentance yeah. brings a change in our behavior. 
The Bible tells us about many men and women of God that go and they change their behavior after repenting unto God, after not just feeling sorry, but doing something after that sorry was said. The perfect example that rings in my mind is Saul, who we know as Paul. We know him as a great man of God. We know him uh, in all of his glory of him being a mighty man of God. But the Bible says he was once named Saul of Tarshish. It tells us that he was a man that would persecute the church. He was a man that would go and give his testimony against Christians that were calling on the name of Jesus. But when repentance came to him, it didn't just change his name, but it changed his conduct. So we can't just look to God and say, I'm sorry for this and I'm sorry for that. It shouldn't just be about our words, but it should be some action following behind our words. So repentance not only should it lead us uh, to change in our mind, but it should change our feelings and change our purpose and then change our behavior, changing our conduct. And you may ask yourself a question, what, what does, where does really repentance come from and where does it, uh, what leads us to repentance? So first I want you to understand that repentance is a gift of God. So many times we just think about the Holy Spirit as the gift of God. Many times we just think about joy and peace as these gifts of God. But repentance is a gift of God. The Bible says in Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 30 and 31, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This is a great blessing that we have to be able to go unto God and give him a true repentance over our life. I know I'm not the only one that has made some wrong decisions. I know I'm not the only one that can look back in our life and see some wrong areas and even look in our lives now and see some areas I can do better in. But true repentance comes in where there's all sincerity. I, how many know that God knows how to not just look at your words and the crocodile tears that people may bring? But God searches the heart of a man. He, he searches the heart of the matter. I've seen some people that can act real good and they will dance and they will shout, they will cry and they will fall out, but they will leave the building and act the same way and do the same thing that they say they just repented for. Not only that, we've got people nowadays that will go out and sin willfully. Go out and say, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and God's just going to forgive me later. But when we're talking about true repentance, first you've got to understand, we don't know the day nor the hour when he's going to return. We don't know the day nor the hour when he's going to call our name. We don't know when he's going to part those skies. We don't know when he's going to call our name to leave this earth. But one thing we know for sure is that now that we have a breath in our body, yeah. we've got an opportunity to give what true repentance. So what leads to true repentance? How do we get to that place? Because I know I'm not the only one that many people have told me for many years, especially before I came to God, that you need to ask for forgiveness, that you need to repent, that you need to come to God, that you need to do better, that you need to give your heart and your life to God. But what leads to repentance? How do I get to that place where I'm even ready for repentance? Number one, the gift of repentance is given through the preaching of the word of God. The word of God is so powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is the only thing that Jesus exalts above his very name. The word of God is forever settled. It is the most powerful thing and tool that we have uh, to fight the enemy down here on this earth. So it is through the gift, uh, through the preaching of the word of God that we are given this gift of repentance. Watch this, Matthew 12 chapter and the 41st verse. Matthew 12 and 41 says, Jesus said, the men of Nineveh shall, raise, shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here. We remember the story. Many of us remember the story of Jonah and the whale. We, we, we uh, Jonah and the great fish. 
We remember that story that God uh, loved, uh, must have showed so much mercy and patience and love for this great city called Nineveh because he allowed uh, Jonah to, even when he was fleeing from the presence of God, that he still had to go and fulfill the de destination and the duty that he got the first time. So one, that tells us about the grace of God. That tells us uh, that God loves us so much that he will go through some impossible situations. He, he will cause some situations to happen in someone else's life, or even our lives, if we are disobedient to stopping the will of God. So the Bible says that he goes and he preaches to this great city called Nineveh, telling them that they must turn from their wicked ways, telling them that destruction is coming. And because of him preaching the word of God, preaching the instructions that God had gave them, they begin to repent. Come on, you remember the story where the Bible says that, that, that the king began to call a fast amongst all the land. And he began to say, not only uh, for me, I'm going to rip off my clothes and sit in ashes. Not only me, but don't let nobody eat no food. Don't let nobody drink no water. Not even just the people. Let's even make sure that the animals are not eating or drinking. And hopefully God will hear us. Yeah. They didn't just say, God, I'm sorry. But they put some action behind that. that. That's what true repentance is. And God heard them and gave them another opportunity. So not only uh, the question that leads to repentance, not only does preaching the word of God lead to repentance, but number two, the goodness of God leads to repentance. Listen, I, I don't know about you, but there's plenty of times that I look back and say, God, what, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do, I, especially in my sin, especially uh, in my low place? God, what do I deserve to get this job for? What do, what do I deserve to keep waking up every morning? Why, why do you keep blessing me? Because I found out that the goodness of God can lead us to, listen, y'all don't hear me on tonight. Sometimes the way you treat people will allow, especially in their low place, will allow them to look to you when they get back up again. We, they will that will push them over the edge because they have no hope and they have no joy in certain areas. But you being a light will allow them to be uh, to follow the light out of the darkness. So the goodness of God leads to repentance. Watch this Romans the second chapter and the fourth verse. Romans two and four says, "Or despise it thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God." Lead it thee to repentance. God being faithful can turn our life around, can give us things. Can, sometimes we've got scales over our eyes and, and we can't really see God's faithfulness. We can't really see God's goodness. We, we're overlooking these blessings that we have. I used to tell my children, be grateful for what you have. Count your blessings. Everybody don't have a game system. Everybody don't have their old room. Everybody don't have this solid roof over their head. Everybody don't have these things. And that's not just the, the children. That's the you and me too. Everybody doesn't have what we have. And you may say, I don't got much, but you got more than somebody else has. Right. Right. So the goodness of God can lead us to repentance. Us seeing his faithfulness yeah. eventually may turn our heart and say, how can I be faithful back to him? Mm. So the goodness of God leads to repentance. Number yeah. three, the sorrows of life bring people to repentance. And many of us, this is our testimony. That this is what this is how God got my attention to, to make sure that I'm giving true repentance. This is how God drew me in by the sorrows of life, the problems, the, the troubles, the issues happening in our lives. Psalms, the 78th chapter and the 38th verse. Again, Psalms 78 and 34 says, When he slew them, when God slew them, then they sought him. And they returned and inquired early after God. They had to see, these people had to see God destroy some people. And when they saw destruction happening, the Bible says, then they saw him. And then they returned and inquired early after God. You, you know how many, many times the only way that we really pray like we need to is when trouble comes. You know how we can get to that place where the only time we really put an extra fast days in or even being obedient to fast days in, is when problems arise, when the doctor appointment is coming up. 
Yes. You know, it, it's not just even a uh, spiritual thing. Sometimes we, we don't do good until the doctor says, I need some blood work. We, 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 that's when we'll cut back on the sodium. And that's when we'll cut back on the sweets because we know that we're about to be revealed. We're, we're, uh, what we've been doing in the dark is now about to come to the light. It's the same way it is with God in our spiritual that's relationship. Right. That's right. That's right. It's the same way that it is that the sorrows of life could bring us and get our attention and my desire and my prayer has been God whatever it takes yeah. whatever it takes to get me to the place where I need to be whatever it takes and that's a very bold statement to make mm -hmm. but if, if you're serious about making an end one day yeah. if you're serious about seeing God as a peaceful God if you're serious about hearing him say well done my good and faithful servant your prayer should be God whatever it takes to get me there if sorrow has to come, then, and I don't want it to come. Mm -hmm. The pain has to come to redirect whatever you need to do to get my attention. Get it if it's all of me. Because yeah. I'm serious about my life. And not just my life down here on this earth, but eternal life. Yeah. Lastly, what leads to repentance? Number four, the emptiness mm -hmm. of life. Feeling alone. Has anybody ever been there? When you feel alone, you feel isolated. You feel like you've got nobody to count on. You've got nobody to, to, to reach out to. You've got, you don't have that circle like everybody else has. You, you don't have that foundation. You don't have people that you can pull on like everybody else has. Sometimes the emptiness of life can make someone repent. Yeah. Perfect example of the, the prodigal son going right back to him. The Bible says he goes out, he all of a sudden, when he's got money and he's enjoying life, and no doubt friends and people are around him. The Bible says when he has nothing, there's nobody there. He's all alone and he goes and finds, I believe, a family member and he goes, begins to work for them. And the only thing that changed his mind was realizing his life was in realizing he was in a bad situation, realizing that a, a, a son of a king is eating pigs. Well, he felt empty. Must have felt alone. As though there was nobody else to turn to. And sometimes we got to get that alone. Yeah. That's not everybody's testimony. Somebody listened just at the first scare. Just, just at the first doctor. Just, just at the first glimpse of, of, of sin. Just at the first glimpse. That, that, that pregnancy scare. That, that family almost moved. Whatever it, whatever it was. Some of us who stopped right there and said, God, I give it up. Yeah, yeah. But for some individuals, because we are not all the same, for some people, it takes getting all the way down low. It takes being stripped of everything, having an emptiness yeah, yeah. to get to God mm -hmm. yeah, and give true repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance is bringing forth a change. It's, it's repentance is not just feeling bad about something or right. saying I'm sorry, but true repentance. Mm -hmm. Brings forth a change, God. We're at our scripture on tonight. Psalms, the 51st chapter. And here we have David. We have a familiar, uh, a very familiar a man of God. Uh, the Bible declares him, and many of us are reminded that the Bible declares him as the man after God's own heart. He was one that loved God. And he, and he showed it. He trusted him so much in many of his actions. We saw it. But he got to the place where he needed to repent to God. And listen, many of us, we can, we can, we can testify that that's been us and that is us. And, and we constantly have to go to God. Many of us can testify uh, that we're constantly reaching out and crying out to God because his mercies are renewed every morning. Some of us, that's our testimony. But the Bible says here at this scripture, uh, this is just after the, the prophet Nathan came to him and after he had gone into that sheep. The Bible says, if you, if you don't remember the story, I'll give it to you really quickly. He goes, he sees a woman who's married mm -hmm. named Bathsheba. Finds out she's married and her husband uh, is a man of war and he desires to have his wife. He desires to have Bathsheba even though she's married. 
But since he's being the king, and, and, and no doubt he, he's walking around with a little bit more confidence, he's not necessarily focused on God anymore, but he's focused on what flesh wants. And, and many of us, we've got that testimony that it's not always for us. What, what we struggle with is what God wants us to do and what flesh wants to do. Yeah. And that's why we've got to uh, uh, decrease for, uh, flesh. That's why we have to understand that the flesh is weak, right. but the spirit of God is willing. So the Bible says that he gives a note to Uriah. Uh, and tells him to go up, be put on the front line. There's a lot more details, but that's the general sense of the story. And now Nathan, the prophet of God, gets confirmation from God, goes and tells him that you are the man that has done this evil deed and God is not pleased. He's faced with his issue. And sometimes we're okay as long as our issues are hidden. Sometimes we're, we're okay as long as our, our flaws aren't shown before the world. Sometimes we're, we're okay as long as uh, we're hidden behind the cover, we're hidden behind the veil. But now his sin is open. He says, because you've given them people a reason to say, uh, to blaspheme, you've got to be punished. You're about to lose this child. This child. So David begins to write this song and he begins to talk to God. Watch what verse 1 and 2 says. Verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities. What he's doing now is what many of us do before we get ready to repent unto God. When we go to God in prayer, not only do we praise him for being uh, an a God to us. Not only do we thank him for being a God in our lives, but our first desire is pleading for mercy. God, I, I, have mercy on me. When you, when you take recognition and you take accountability for the things that you know that you've done incorrectly. Uh, my wife used to tell my children all the time, I can tell if you've done something on purpose or not because if you really did something on accident, you say, I'm sorry. If you didn't really mean to push that over, knock that over, and hit that individual, you would say, excuse me, I'm sorry. So David's response to God is, God, have mercy on me. According to your loving kindness. You are loving and kind, God. Have mercy on me. According to that multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Throw this into the sea, uh, the depth of the sea. Throw this away from me and wash me of my iniquities. He's pleading for God to have mercy. And then watch three and four it says, for I acknowledge my transgression. And listen, stop right there because we have to acknowledge it. We can't just go over, wash over it. You know, now it's a generation of people that don't want to ever say I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a generation of people now that they don't want to ever have no conversations. They don't ever want to want to talk about the wrong and the issues. They just want to sweep over it, yeah. walk over it, shout over it, dance over it. But David shows us a good example. He says, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. I'm not forgetful. I'm not just going to look back and say, listen, I, I did it and oh well. But it's ever before me. It's constantly playing in my mind how I disappointed you, how I did things outside of your will. And flesh desire to do it, flesh desire to have her. But now that I'm coming to this recognition, now that scales are off of my eyes, God, I need you to have mercy. Because I realize now I need you more than I need the stuff. I need you more than I need the thing. I need you more than I need the individual. Have mercy on me. I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is never before me. Against thee, the only have I sinned. Uh, this was not uh, broadcast to anybody else. I, 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 I did not put anybody else in a terrible situation, but it was against you and I that I've sinned. I'm not going to push no blame on nobody else. So I'm not going to play the blame game as many of us try to. Yeah. Yeah. What did Adam say? That woman you gave me. Mm -hmm. Many times that's our desire. That's our, that devil made me do it. But he's taking all the responsibility. He says, against thee and only thee have I sinned and done this evil in the sight. He's confessing the sin. And for many of us, right there is where we would stop because we've confessed it and we'll just move on. But let's talk about true repentance. Yeah. It goes on and it tells us 
uh, in verse 5, Behold, I, I was shaken in iniquity, and, and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, that thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and, and in thy hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. 7 says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. I, God, I, I, I'm not just sorry. I'm not just confessing what I did was wrong. God, I need you to clean me. God, I need you to change me. I, I don't want to have these desires anymore. I don't want to have this mindset anymore. I need to be changed from the head, uh, uh, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Purge me with this and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I tried it by myself. Now I need you to clean me, God. I need you to purge me. I, I need you to wash me. And if you do, I don't have to worry about this coming back up over and over again. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out mine iniquities. What he's really saying is God restore me. God, I need you to restore me. And that's the place, that's where it goes from not just repentance of God, I'm sorry. But then it goes to God, restore me. Restore me back to the place that I need to be in. Restore me uh, to the place where I was in you. Restore me, forgive me uh, for the things that I've done. Forgive me for not praying like I needed to pray. Forgive me for not fasting the way I desire I, you desire for me to pray. Forgive me for not being obedient, whether it seems small or big to us. God, forgive me, purge me, cleanse me, and restore me. I need you to restore me. Verse 10 says, creating me a clean heart. I won't change no matter what. If you gotta change my mind, God, change my mind. God, if you if, if you gotta change my circle, change my circle. If you gotta change my heart, because the heart that was pleasing in your sight before, because I was a man after your own heart. Now I want you, I see what my own desires and, and me following the flesh led to create and give me a new heart, Jesus. Make me afresh, make me new. Restore my heart and renew a right spirit within me. Obviously, the way that I've been doing, the things that I've been doing have not been pleasing in Jesus. I created me a clean heart. He's asking for restoration in his heart. We're almost done. Restore unto me, the 12th verse. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. He's asking for God to restore the joy of his salvation. God, restore me. I, I don't just want a restored heart, but I, I, I need my joy back. I, need, I, I don't want to be in condemnation. I, I need my joy back. And not only my joy, uphold me with your free spirit. And God, if you do this, I'm not just going to go out and do it again. I'm not just going to go out and, and, and when the next opportunity presents us, she'll just die right back in. But he says, if you do this, then I'm going to teach the transgressors your ways. And, and sometimes we've got to clarify and make sure we fully understand that some things we have to experience in order to tell somebody else about. I'm not saying everything. You don't got to go and smoke, uh, uh, drink alcohol or, or drink alcohol excessively or, or smoke uh, 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 illegal substances to be able to tell somebody God to do it. But sometimes God uses our experiences to be able to tell someone else that he is a God that can bring us out. He says, then will I teach the transgressors thy ways, and, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. 14, deliver me from thy blood guiltiness. O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Not only do I want you to restore me, my heart, my joy. But I want you to restore my praise. I want you to restore the praise that I have, that I had on the inside. I need you to restore me. Get me back to the place where I need to be in you. And we'll move in quickly. 14, uh, 16. 
For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken heart or a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. It says you are not desiring for me to burn another sacrifice. You're not desiring uh, for me to do anything else but be remorseful and to change. But in order to do that, I need you to restore me. So I'm coming to tell you all tonight that true repentance causes not only for us to just say that I'm sorry without it, because people lie. I say that again, people will lie. Yeah. They will look you in your face and they will lie to you. And if you think, it, some, some, some people used to think God, they wouldn't do it to God. Yeah. But they will come in the church house, yeah. grab the microphone and lie up and down. I've seen it. They will do it. But true repentance yes. means, God, I, I'm not just sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not just sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry that there's going to be some action behind this. Yeah. I'm so sorry that I don't want this to come up again. I'm so sorry that I need you to change my heart and change my mind and restore me to a better place that I need to be in you. I can't do it by myself. And I come to tell you that he's given us power. He's given us access to power all the time. That we do not have to stay in our sin. That we do not have to deal with sin and its consequences as long as we do what the Bible says to do. But that's the part. To not just be able to quote the Bible, but to live the Bible. To not just be able to say your favorite scripture, but to live your favorite scripture. We can't just be hearers of the word, but we've got to be doers. We're almost done. Really quickly, I want to give you these reflections. Uh, questions, three questions that I want you to be able to just examine your own self and ask yourself either now or as it, during your study on this week. Uh, three questions that I want to ask you. Number one, I want to ask you, uh, knowing what truth or repentance is now, I want you to ask yourself, have you really repented? Knowing what true repentance is now, I want to ask you, have you repented? Have you truly repented? Have you not only said that you're sorry, but showed God that you're sorry through the changing of your life? Number two, what are some possible consequences of procrastinating our repentance? What are some consequences of procrastinating, waiting, pushing things off, saying we'll repent later, let's have a little bit more fun, and I'm not ready to give this up yet. What are some consequences because there's either consequences or rewards. For every choice that we make, consequences or rewards. Number three, are you prepared to offer true repentance? Uh, again, are you prepared to offer true repentance in all areas of your life? Are you prepared to offer true repentance in all areas of your life? And right behind that, or are you holding on to sin? Found out we can talk a real big game. But I actually speak louder than I words. Are you holding on up? Are you prepared to offer true repentance in all areas of your life? Or are you holding on the scene? But we thank and praise God just for the word on tonight. We thank and praise God just for uh, sending forth instruction and bringing forth revelation to us about what true repentance really is. We've got to repent in order to be saved. That, that, that's a huge part that many people don't want to talk about. We, we want to talk about the dancing and the praising and the clapping and everything's going to be all right and God's going to work it out and people turn it around. But there is something that we have to do. Right? And starting with repentance. So we thank and praise God just for the word on tonight. I uh, want to see if any have any questions, thoughts, comments uh, before we get ready to pray. <laughs> Amen. If not, we thank and praise God once again for you all being with us on the uh, tune in via live stream. Uh, we praise God for you. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and get ready to dismiss. We're going to ask that you bow your heads once again. Father God, Lord, we thank you. We praise you today, God. We thank you for your word once again. Uh, we thank you just to be hearers and not only 
hearers, but doers of your word. We thank you for an opportunity to be uh, to be revealed, uh, for you to reveal to us what true repentance is. God, we pray that you created us a clean heart, God. We pray that you purge us with this, oh God. We pray that you change our minds, change our heart, oh God. If there's any areas in our life that we're holding on to something that's not like you, God. God, whatever it takes to get rid of it, oh God. God, we pray that you do it, God. Bring forth change in our life, God. We want to be pleasing in this life. We want to hear you say well done, my good and faithful servant. God, we thank you just for this, this night, oh God. We thank you for this time. We lift up all the sick, the shut in, and the bereaved family all around the world, God. Those that are hurting, those that are troubled emotionally, mentally, spiritually, God. We lift them up, God. Pray that you meet the needs of the people. God, you got all power in your hands. There's nothing too hard for you, oh God. So we pray that you give everyone a mind to cast all our fears upon you, God. You care for us. You love us, oh God. And you don't put more on us than we can bear. Lord, we say thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Somebody shout amen. 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 God, uh, you know, be dismissed at this time. Yeah.